Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings. And for those of you who are interested, this is a small, uh, not entirely regular necessarily, series based on diabetes and my own experience with the disease, which may help some of you because I've managed to kick it. And now I've gone completely drug free for the first time in 15 months since I was first diagnosed. And with a bit of luck, you may well be able to do the same. I've got to just say though, there are a small number of perspicacious and very generous people who like to support this channel by going on Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee and various other places. If you'd like to do the same, feel free. There's a link down at the bottom in the comment section. Other than that, thanks very much. And now let's get on with it. On with the next episode. So, I left you with a bit of a cliffhanger last week. I'd just been to see the optician and I discovered that things had improved. Now, there's no guarantees that things will improve for everyone. But when I was first diagnosed with diabetes, I was given the instruction that I should go on to the diabetes.co.uk website. So I did this and I started finding out everything I could about diabetes and diets. The first thing I've been told was I was overweight. I think that's a standard response by all doctors to any chap of about 62 years old going into a medical practice, because obviously I must be overweight. I've been eating for far too long, 62 years mainly. So I was told I had to lose a load of weight. I was quite a significant weight. I'm just trying to remember what I was actually. I'm now going to refer back to my diabetes records. One of the things that the diabetic nurse said to me was, well, what would be a good idea would be for you to Keep track of exactly what it is you eat. Keep a food diary. Keep track of your body weight and basically make sure you keep on top of your weight. He said that the main thing I had to do was to lose a lot of weight. And his suggestion was about two stone. And so I went away and started to do just that. When I started, I was, I've got the records here, 198 pounds in weight. That's a lot. I don't know how much it works out to. But um, 198 pounds divided by 14, well, it's a lot. What am I now? Well, as you can see from these figures, if you can see, that was the first record, and it went down at this sort of rate, 182, 181, doo -doo -doo -doo, and down 175, 172. You really do get quite obsessive about weight, until it ended up at 170, which is perfectly good. Um, in terms of being overweight, this brings me down into a very safe level. How did I lose that weight? Well, the fabulous Dr. Michael Mosley. Many years ago, my wife and I decided we needed to lose a bit of weight, and so we went on to his 5-2 diet, which was brilliant because you could eat like a king or a hog five days of the week, and then two days a week you reduced your calorie intake massively to only 600 calories or so and it worked very well for us we lost a little bit of weight and we felt very good on it um, but recently when I started when I discovered I was diabetic he had recently brought out a new book called the fast 800 diet <gasps> now it didn't mean fast as in quick necessarily it was a fasting as in not eating and 800 calories a day for up to 12 weeks but if you haven't seen this book, go and buy a copy. It explains so much about 
dietary requirements. It explains so much about diabetes. It explains about obesity and the problems with obesity. It covers just about every angle you could possibly imagine. And then I also found a rather brilliant book, which was from a couple of people who have experience of diabetes. Now, there are loads of books by different people. The thing that was special about the Michael Mosley book was that it explained the causes of diabetes as far as they are um, understood currently, and also how to control it. And I read that book pretty much in one sitting. It didn't take very long. It's not a very thick book. But it did leave me with a much more full understanding of diabetes, what the impacts are, what the dangers are, and also how to possibly cure it than I had from any doctors that I'd spoken to. So I went on this diet and I started losing weight. And it was really rapid weight loss. Very, very pleasing. What's the overall summary? Well, you need to avoid carbohydrates. Many people are convinced that the only thing that causes diabetes is too many sugary drinks, too many sugary foods, sweets, chocolate, or all that sort of stuff. No, it's not. Those are definitely things to avoid. However, if you have what I considered beforehand to be a healthy diet, lots of pasta, Mediterranean type of diet, um, lots of vegetables, certainly lots of fruit. I mean, I've always liked bananas and apples and all the other good things. And I would have quite a lot of sourdough bread because that's obviously better for you than ordinary bread. And I would have quite a lot of rice. The trouble is these things aren't actually very good for you. Pasta is full of carbohydrate. Potato is full of carbohydrate. Parsnips are full of carbohydrate. Rice is full of carbohydrate. Any of these things you look at, as soon as you start to investigate, what happens is the carbohydrate you eat is converted into sugar in your body. It's converted into glucose and that goes around, fixes itself to your red blood cells and they swan around your body merrily creating fat. The way to get rid of the fat is to go on a diet which involves much more greenery, much more in the way of unsugary, uncarbohydrate, starchy uh, vegetables. You cut back on fruits that come from near the tropics. Bananas are full of starch. That all gets converted to sugar. But that's not the only thing. If you eat pineapples, if you eat... Um, too much citrus fruit, too many oranges, too many tangerines. They all are very rich in sugars because they have a longer growing season. They have more sun. And the simple process of fruits means that they will create much more sugar. You're fine if you have a handful of berries or a handful of strawberries or things like that, but not the sweet sugary fruits that you think should be good. What else? Well, you have to avoid things like bread. Bread is absolutely stuffed full of starches and carbohydrate. You have to avoid beer. Beer is stuffed full of carbohydrate. Oddly enough, you seem to be okay on red wine. Not necessarily to the extent that I hit it, but um, a glass or two a day is apparently really not too bad. Chocolate is good for you, so long as it's low sugar chocolate. So really good strong dark chocolate which luckily is the only one i like is perfectly good for you but the message here is simply that i thought i had a good diet i've never particularly liked sweet things i've always avoided puddings i've never liked sweets themselves i've never liked cakes particularly and so i've not eaten them i've always been a savory eater but i've also loved um, a good thick stew with lots of mashed potato I've loved chips. Well, yeah, we all know chips aren't good for you. Um, but even the simple things like slices of sourdough bread aren't good for you. So when I changed my diet, basically what I changed to doing was cutting out all carbohydrates. Instead of having two or three slices of toast for breakfast with some cold meat or something similar, 
I progressed to 30 grams of porridge oats, jumbo oats, cooked up with 200 mils of water, good thick pinch of salt, you need to have the salt, with about 30 grams of nuts and about 30 grams of blueberries. And then to top it off, two big dollops of kefir or some other type of yogurt. Why? Well, one of the things Michael Mosley says is don't give up on, for example, full fat milk, full fat yogurt, fat in meats, because they all leave you feeling full. And what you want to do if you're going on a diet is to not feel hungry, so you feel you have to snack. Apart from anything else, if you've got 30 grams of mixed nuts in with your porridge, I find it takes me three times longer to actually eat it because you've got to chew the damn things. So I'll have um, either half walnuts, half almonds, or I'll have half cashew nuts and half something else. But I'll always just mix in different types of nuts daily, so I'm getting a different proportion of um, the essential vitamins and things that I need. Things like bread, now they're hard to give up. I found this, and this is by Katie and Giancarlo Caldesi. It's a great book, it really is. It's simple, it explains a lot about, here we go, food and obesity. Um, Dr. David Unwin has done a huge amount of work mainly around diabetes because he's a GP, a general practitioner, and he's found that with all of the patients that he has who go on a low carbohydrate diet, 75% of them get a full remission from diabetes. 75%. He reckons now that he saves his medical practice somewhere in the region of £68,000 a year on medication and so on, that he now doesn't need because his patients are coming off diabetes. Now, you can take all of that with a pinch of salt if you want, but what I take away from it is that it is really a good idea to move off from, diet, um, from carbohydrates and start going on to a low-carbohydrate diet. For me, that's the reason why I've lost so much weight and it's the reason why I believe I have now gone drug-free with my diabetes. It is a great book. This one's handy because it's a 30-minute cookbook, but I've got three other cookbooks of theirs on my phone and my Kindle and I refer to them regularly. So, what happened after going carbohydrate free. Well, as I say, I've lost a lot of weight. Got wobbly bits now, which is rather sad. I've... Do I feel more energetic and so on? Not particularly, no. Um, I can't say I feel really any different compared to how I used to. But I know that... Uh, Certainly, keeping the weight off is much, much better for me. And to be honest, I like the food. I mean, the biggest difficulty for me was giving up bread. But now I'm moving back to a 50, 50 gram slice of sourdough every now and again, once or twice a week, perhaps, with cheese. But I've also discovered the joys of Derbyshire oat cakes. That's not a recipe in this book. I was in Derbyshire a couple of weeks ago and I was given a meal of a Derbyshire oat cake with ham and cheese and it was wonderful. It's like a sort of oaty pancake full of cheesy goodness. It was lovely. Um, I've discovered that it's a good idea to keep five or six hard-boiled eggs in the fridge because then whenever I get really, really hungry and I need something... I'll just have a hard-boiled egg with a dollop of some sort of chilli sauce on top and it's delicious. So that's good. I keep a lot of celery in the fridge and some cream cheese, full fat. 
and if I need something extra, I can have a couple of sticks of celery and some full fat cheese on. All these things are absolutely wonderful. When I was with the doctors, I was told that the best thing to do is to speak to a nutritionist. And they put me onto a, um, an app called Oviva, O-V-I-V-A, which apparently is free for several weeks for um, diabetic sufferers. And in addition to Oviva, uh, I was put in touch with a nutritionist who I could speak to every two weeks for six weeks or so. And she was very nice. Um, she said, I remember the first discussion, she said, so what did you have for breakfast? And I said, ah, I had porridge, because I thought, I'm a good boy. And she said, oh, that's nice. Was it on its own? And I said, no, I had it with water and a banana. And she said, oh, that's not good. I said, why? She said, well, bananas are full of carbohydrate, oats are full of carbohydrate, that's going to give you a blood spike, you mustn't have banana with porridge. Oh, what can I have? And she said, berries, you know, a handful of raspberries or strawberries or blueberries, anything like that, that's much better. So it was quite a learning process, but it was handy having a nutritionist on call that I could speak to. Some of the things... I mean, giving up beer as a Morris dancer, that's embarrassing. Hopefully I'll be able to return to a beer every now and again. I did have a couple of pints of beer earlier this year after a Morris practice, and it did make the blood sugars go a bit haywire. But you know, some things you can't give up entirely. As a Morris dancer, it would be embarrassing having to go around just with a glass of red wine. It doesn't work. So, the main message from this episode, I think, is look at what you're eating. And in particular, look up Dr David Unwin, U-N-W-I-N. He's got a number of really interesting graphics that show you which foods are the worst in terms of carbohydrate value and which are going to convert into the most sugar. As an example, white rice converts into a lot of sugar. Brown rice, almost exactly the same. Very little saving. It still isn't good for you. Pasta, okay, white flour pasta, not good for you. Brown flour with... Um, what do you call it, wholemeal flour, actually isn't that much better. It's got a slight improvement because it's got roughage, but it's still pasta full of carbohydrate. And so you need to start looking at all of the different things. And basically, if you're diabetic, this is what you should be moving on to. Much more greens, much more simple vegetables. And the one thing that I am absolutely awful at portion control. I am basically still a pig. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. I hope you found it informative. And what more is there to say? Thanks a lot for listening and watching. I'll speak to you soon. And now I'd just like to say thanks a lot for making it all the way through to the end. If you'd like to help keep this channel going, then as I mentioned at the start, there's Patreon, there's Super Thanks, there's Buy Me A Coffee and all signs of other links down at the bottom which you can go through in order to support the channel like so many other very friendly people. In the meantime, even if you don't support the channel financially, I'm very grateful for you having spent the time to get through to here. So thanks very much and have a great week. I'll be back before too long.